Hello, folks. Oh, I just saw. Oh, there goes that black and white ball fuzz running. Who knows? But I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom, and I'm here to talk about some pro wrestling. Mainly, mainly that of coming from the WWE product, because in uh, a couple of weeks, oh, problems. We're gonna get some AEW content, and I think next week actually starts. Oh yeah, that's right. Next week starts NXT on TV. I caught NXT on YouTube last week, mainly because it was just a hurricane week. Normally Wednesday and th Wednesday and Thursdays are kind of like my off days. So I know this week's schedule. You see this handsome face. They're Monday, Tuesday, Friday, and also Sunday. Sunday is Ashley Class of Champions for WWE. Unfortunately, I've been a bad hobo, and I'm I'm in the hobo corner right now, so I can't give you a live stream show, an R R and R show. I will give my review on it, and I'll let you know how things kind of stand. Um, let's talk about some Monday Night Raw, because this show had a lot going on. I'd like to thank everyone that have been watching. Um, I think I got, I think I took care of most of my subscription, my thank you to my new subscribers. Uh, this week, I don't know, it was so botchy. Impact was so botchy, I was so botchy, it was... <laughs> Botchalinianism, I guess that Impact and I were suffering from, because Impact, they kind of hinted at stuff way too early. And I just started throwing videos to thank everyone, and I I know I goofed up somewhere. I think by the time Friday rolled along, I'm just like, just get this done. So I'm here to talk about Monday Night Raw. I'll probably go take a look at my emails eventually. I'm just terrible at I've been bad at emails recently. Especially work related ones. Personal ones I always check. Work related emails. Not so much. But I do apologize about that. So let's get to some nostalgia. And I'll tell you what, folks. Nostalgia is one heck of a drug. Because Stone Cold Steve Austin showed up. Seth got the what wanted out of him. He, he knows the cadence on how to do what. And those fans in New York City, you know who I'm talking to. You try to start seeing punk chants for a while. Shame, shame, shame. And AJ and the club got out. They got what if and AJ. <laughs> AJ and the club. <laughs> Poor Carl Anderson. He just wanted to laugh so hard. Wow, he's never been met with so much joy or so much enthusiasm since, probably since they put the Dudley Boys to the table three years ago. Yeah. Wow. Um, they just all seem, and that was some some good cursing again. Stone Cold just was about ready to lose it, I think. So was poor Seth Rollins. It was a soccer mom chant. Uh, it was a stunner to, to AJ Styles. Stone Cold, you're number one in my book. Like, like so. So, Steve, what's what what what's what's the finish of the match? Kick and gut stunner. Okay. Again, that was from um. Oh, what's his face? Just incredible. He talks about his podcast. He had to wrestle Stone Cold. He's like, well, how do you want to work, work the match? What, what's, what's the ending? Kick the gut, stunner. So, I was like, hey. Uh, so, um, also, there's a whole bunch of Becky Lynch promos on ESPN. That's pretty good. Um, that definitely adds WWE to the mainstream. Gives a more mainstream audience. They showed a couple of them. They're just funny. Uh, starts off opening match AJ Styles versus Cedric Alexander. It was a fast start to the match. 
Um, AJ, he doesn't mind selling to people like Cedric Alexander. He's a pro. Um, uh, eventually, AJ did go after the bad arm of Cedric Alexander. Oh. Uh, Cedric Alexander to party again. Oh. Well, he did slam AJ. He did, uh, did the Michinoku driver on AJ. Pretty good, but we had a sell the dust of Sinister. The club had to get involved and made up a dust of Sinister. And what, what's that I hear in the background? Holla, 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 player. Uh, this eventually was a dusty old ham sandwich. Then the Viking Raiders, for some reason, made in. Again, there was a little holla, holla, play, play going on. Because this set up for a 10-man tag team match. But no one bled, though. All their foreheads are too smooth and too shiny, baby. They need some blood. Yeah, blood. Um, so, again, that was, like I said, it was a ham sandwich of a match. It was a dusty finish. Cedric Alexander obviously won. Because the club beat him up. And then, of course, Viking Raiders make the save. And then, Seth and Braun came out and cleaned out. AJ. AJ's just AJ. He's, he's so good in the ring. I do want to see the club versus the Viking Raiders. Only because that's something that I don't think we saw happen in New Japan. So that'd be pretty good to see. Then there was a, a Bailey and, and Sasha promo. <sighs> then they teased the Firefly Funhouse. I don't know where the Devil Vince puppet is. Devil Vince puppet's pretty cool. Then there was a Roman Reigns promo about cancer. He brings out a bunch of kids with, with their nicknames. I can't boo him. So, Roman Reigns... Hooray. Then in a match that went way too long. And this is a problem now with the WWE. When they have long matches, I don't think a lot of their talents used to having long matches. They're used to that short 7 to 15 minute range. When it goes past that, it gets really clunky. Like, I know a, the prime example, the forever example, is, of course, at the Saudi Arabia show, the most recent one, um, Undertaker versus Goldberg. If it went five minutes, people would have been happy. And Goldberg wouldn't have tried to do dumb things like concuss himself, be a mess for the rest of them. This... I had some of those same issues, I think. Um, it was Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair. Woo! Versus Bailey and, and, and Sasha Banks. And for the most part, it was pretty good. A brawl just starts out on the outside. I'm always happy to see brawls. Um, Sasha. Then she, one day, she has to learn... When she goes between the ropes, she has to say, hey, 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 break, 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 like Yano. She has to pull a Yano. Say, hey, 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 break, break, break. Because obviously she doesn't know how to do that because she just goes between the ropes and she says, get her back. No, you have to go break, break, break. And then the other person has to go against her and say, ah, break, 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 break. And of course, that's the Yano moment. Yano is still one of my favorite wrestlers in New Japan Pro Wrestling. And I think when I made my best New Japan Pro Wrestler list, I think he was in my top 10. I think he was the only debatable one, I think. So, hey, YTR. Yano. Or Toro Yano. I still want to see him wrestle. I want... That should be on my bucket list. I should see a Toro Yano match in person. 
So that just seems like fun. So Sasha has to learn how to do that. The crowd try to get involved. They're going to say, hey, baby. Ooh. Ah. I want to know. Will you be my girl? Hey, baby. Ooh. Ah. I want to know. Would you be my girl? And that was kind of a high point in the match. Um, Sasha eventually does not want to tag in. Becky Lynch just starts abusing poor Bailey. Poor Bailey. She just got rammed into the barricade so off. That was actually really good. Bailey, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. I'm warming up to her. She's very professional. She's not botchy either. When she's put in the ring with Rose, not Lacey Evans. Um, Charlotte actually did pretty good for the opening part of the match. Again, it was a very brawly match. Um, we had the double kind of hot tags. There was that nice uh, suplex into and where Sasha Banks tried to reverse that into her neck breaker, but then Charlotte reversed that to her neck breaker, which was pretty good. After that, it got kind of botchy. There was the one kick where even the audience is like, what? Because she missed by like, oh, I want to say a foot and a half almost. She like put her foot up and Banks got like terrified. Banks like where you banged your nose against the turnbuckles. God, Sasha Banks just worries me. Sasha, Sasha botches. Banks, I'm sorry. Not good. Again, she's still botchy though. It wasn't bad for the first ten minutes, but I think once you got to the, about the twelve minute mark, it got kind of sloppy and just. Bocce bite. Then Charlotte started to get bocce, and I wonder if Charlotte's ever had a long match where it was really a wrestling match. I know she was in some long gimmick matches, but I don't think she's actually been in a long wrestling match that wasn't a gimmick. And you can feel free to email or comment to me and say you don't know what you're talking about. Or say, wait a second. You might be onto something. Indeed. Um, then that was pretty good. Um, I don't know. Poor Becky. Poor Becky got tossed into Charlotte, and I think that's when the, the match kind of said, like, there was that leg drop kind of attempted moonsault, which actually looks pretty cool. And then Charlotte lifted her knees up when Ailey was, when Bailey was going to go for the elbow drop. Becky Lynch was beating up Sasha Banks outside the ring. And that doesn't look good because it looks like she like I don't even know how you would do that. Elbow drop. So Charlotte got her knees up, her elbow and tricep. I'll tell you what, if she hit the funny one on, on Charlotte's knee, I don't care how much knee pad. Yeah, that's gonna hurt. That's, that's and it's not gonna be an injury. It's just gonna hurt. Like when you stub your toe. Stub your toe against something, it hurts. You don't necessarily have to go to the doctor. For it. Well, there was that one couple that's playing soccer, and uh, that's a long time ago. But Charlotte busts out the natural selection and pin Bailey. Kind of a shock match. The first half, this was a tale of two matches. The first 10 minutes and the last 10 minutes. 
first 10 minutes were really good. That was a surf and turf. But then it got super botchy in the last 10 minutes. I'm going to fall apart a little bit. So what I did, actually, I just called this, I said this is a cheeseburger match, and I'm like, oh, 10 minutes. This is pretty good. And then after that 10, then that minute marker 15, I'm like, this is lousy again. So, but I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. This was a good cheeseburger match. Uh, AJ Styles in the club. They had a promo with uh, Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode. Then we had what I thought was a really fun match. But again, I tranquil a little bit because I do enjoy me some Lucha Libre style. Uh, it was Rey Mysterio versus Grand Malik. I'll tell you what, it was fun. It was Tenniko versus Tenniko. Rey did the flop roll, and, his, and he, he saw that he was going to miss and just kind of did a somersault. That was amazing. I mean... Grand Malik can fly, man. He was doing some stuff on the top rope, the top rope senton. He really jumped onto the second rope and used that to springboard himself onto Ray on the outside. That looked amazing. The old poor Ray in that I think Ray was bleeding out of the mouth. And it's one of those things like if you bite your cheek, you can see his tongue kind of going and say, what's, what's that, blood? So, so, hey, get some old fashioned busted open blood, baby. He just needs to do it on his forehead. His forehead is too smooth. Like a technical, he has to get bloody. But, you know what? Thing, things like that happen all the time in wrestling. You bite your cheek. I don't think he lost a tooth, but it was just bleeding. Again, you bite your cheek. It hurts, it's annoying, and you bleed a little bit. You're like, and then like sometimes like it'll like, I think like you can tell because they the close up of Ray's face and you see like blood on his teeth, and and whole time where I what the uh, I just drew my cheek. But again, that was fun though. Again, the top rope sent on amazing. Uh, Ray still has it in spots. I can't take anything away from Ray. He hasn't slowed down as much as Rob Van Dam has in Impact Wrestling. Although you, you you never know how, how how much how much of that slow slow does that though. Um, I hit a lucha destroyer, which still looks amazing. Rey Mysterio pinned Grand Malik, and in the grandest tradition, grandest lucha tradition of Tenniko versus Tenniko, they kind of shake hands, kind of bow to each other. Grand Malik goes, "Thank you," and and Rey's like, "Dude, awesome man." And again, as it's a fuzzy feel good moment between two luchadors. I was full entertained. This is a surf and turf match. Then the Street Prophet showed up. And when the Street Prophet showed up, it's time to take a sip of a beverage. I was thirsty. That salty pizza I had for dinner was killing me for a little bit. I hope, I hope the gas station has that lemon tea too. The half, the half. The sweet tea just seems sugary. Let me know what your favorite type of tea is. I like lemon tea. The more lemony, the better. Not so much lemon, not so much half and half. Because there's sweet tea, peach tea is too sweet. Don't think they had raspberry tea. Green tea puts me to sleep for some reason. It's like a natural tranquilo. I think what other flavor they have. I think one place I think had black cherry tea, which sounded interesting. Enough about that, though. The, the uh, Street Profits were doing their kind of at show recap promo thing. Then there was a whole Roman Reigns recap, so we'll we're bound to see something about that tomorrow, I guess. And then this leads us into the triple threat match 
for the king for the raw side of the King of the Ring finals for the King of the Ring. I'm still kind of upset that they not doing this all in one show. Cause when they had the King of the Ring, that was so fun and with Clash of Champions, they really could have done something. Like a one night tournament. Like the way they used to. I don't know. Again, I'm old. I remember I remember the way it used to be. Mainly, oh yeah, the Macho King. These guys are a bunch of sissies, if you ask me. I, mean, I remember I had to go wrestle all night long. Yeah. And I wasn't too sure if I had to slap somebody in the face or if I was going to get slapped in my face. Yeah. So I don't know about these new wrestlers here. They're not as tough as they used to be. I mean, I had people steal my hats. I got hit in the head with guitars. Yeah! And Macho Man's my favorite person to impersonate. Beside the late, great Death the Road. Sweetheart. That's a whole different reason. But it was a Samoa Joe versus Ricochet versus Baron Corbin. And for the most part, Samoa Joe and Ricochet just start to beat each other up. Baron Corbin's smart. He's like, each other up. So when one gets tired, I'll go in there and beat him up. Uh, Ricochet, he can still fly, though. Pretty good. And I think my question, and I have so many questions for Jorge, what, I should do that segment one day. Ask a wrestler. And I want to know, why is it when they always fall off the ring apron to the floor on their feet, they always somehow manage to bonk their head, or to... They managed to bonk their head against the ring apron. If you're falling away, if you're falling down, you should have your hands out protecting yourself and keep your head away from the hardest part of the ring because the real hardest part of the ring are the ring posts, not so much the apron part. But the ring posts, because there will actual metal. Um, so that's my question for him. And Samoa Joe, yeah, he's just so good. Some chops he gives. Woo! Those will wake you up. And then was a T's Tower Doom spot. I was hoping when Samoa Joe put Ricochet up on the top rope, I'm like, Muscle Buster? Are we going to see a muscle buster? Ooh. This would be one of those big one-off things where the muscle buster is kind of that super destructo finisher that only comes out in rare circumstances. This could have been one of them. Oh, that's right. I, I got that done, too. It always amazes me how much I can get done when I really feel like it. So I'm kind of happy about that. Um, but instead they tease a Tower Doom spot. Uh, Ricochet hit the shooting star press from, from the apron to the floor. Still amazing. So good. And he did that to break up the Coquina clutch that Joe had on Baron Corbin. Uh, Ricochet of Dude, I don't know what he did, but I think it was during that shooting star press. He he got himself. Because you could see like a bruise forming like right along the bottom of his rib cage. And you don't want to see the bottom of my rib of my rib cage. That's kind of disgusting. But he had this nasty welt, this whole bruise forming, and he's just like Uchi. Super Uchi. That has to hurt. Uh, he still managed to do a 630 onto Samoa Joe, but then Baron Corbin, that, that sly person, pulled him out of the ring, threw him against the barricade, pinned Joe. Baron Corbin won. I'll tell you what, I don't know if the WWE was telling Baron Corbin to hold back, but all of a sudden, or if it's his opponents or a combination of everything, 
where did this Baron Corbin come from? He's good. He's entertaining to watch. And just because of him, this was a whole surf and turf match. And then for some reason, Lacey Evans versus Natalia Nightheart. You can just tell by my expression how excited I am for this match. It was just... Natty beat up Lacey, and then Lacey beat up Natty. Natty did. I, I will give credit where credit is due. Natty put in that calf crusher move. And I like that. That looks like a, a, a near-legit MMA BJJ calf cutter. And just to give some props to fight perfect. Boom, son. They actually do a really good show in where they break down some mission moves to see if they're legit or not. This one done by Natty looks legit. And I think if she just put a little more pressure, Lacey Evans, she should she, she should put more pressure so Lacey Evans can learn how to wrestle. But all that aside, though, and then also in hopefully about two weeks I get a new microphone too, a new lapel mic for about five bucks. It's a little bit better than this, and I think I paid five bucks for this. It was five ninety nine or something like that. I found one for four ninety eight, so I got a little pat on it and the back of this is like dying and I can feel it digging into my flesh right now. So eventually I have to get a new lapel mic. Because I do have to give online interviews sometimes. And it'll seem a little more professional. The speaker mic the the computer mic's okay. The reverb is terrible, though. Uh, what else about this match? Lacey Evans... Still not smooth. I'll tell you what, she does... She did choke her using the ring apron. Again, I'll give points for creativity. And her, her jumping, twisty moonsault... Still... I'd be chal I'd challenge anyone out there to find a better moonsault than Lacey Evans. Charlotte probably has the purest. Ricochet has one that makes him float in the air forever. But Lacey Evans, that's a good that's a good looking moonsault though. And I will always say that that should be her finisher. The woman's right's just a punch to the face. Um I think Oh, yeah, there were some funny lines. I think even commentary got bored with this match because then it was just ban it was banter between uh, Corey Graves and Renee Young. I can obviously not talk and do hand motions at the same time, so I always have problems figuring out which hand goes where. And as they were bantering, um, let's see here. Give me your tired, your poor Canadians. What did you say? And Mike goes, yeah. <laughs> Mike. Sear. Michael Cole, are you laughing? Of course he's laughing, Renee. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm laughing. That was just funny, though. Cole lost it. Sometimes... I know they OEC. See? I told you we could get them to laugh. <laughs> so sometimes I do wonder if they try to get the other person just to laugh because make them look foolish. You have to pass. You have to pass time somehow, and this match was not doing it. Um, Maddie eventually did put Lacey Evans. Into the sharpshooter, 
And it was like the weirdest, most nonsensical, oh, I have to tap now, tap. Where Lacey Evans is just like, oh, 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 oh. And it's like, listen, if it hurts, you're like, dude, let go, let go, let go, let go, let go. But this was not that. Uh, she did pull the handkerchief from her bra. Ooh. That is kind of nasty. Maybe Renee is right. Threw that at, at Natalia. Natalia threw, uh, stuffed it back in her face at the end of the match. I know when I was working at one place, it always freaked me out when women like reached into the bra, like dug around there. And like pull out a lot of pills. See, that's what happens when I try to mimic stuff. A broken microphone. And it's just like, okay, I'll take that from you and here and leave. Because it's just like, yeah. You press money. And you know the kicker? It was never the cute ones that did that. Nope. 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 I'll leave it at that. Uh, then we have... So that was a ham sandwich of a match. Then we have a promo where some basketball player who used to play for New York got traded to Boston because he got booed, wound up winning and losing the 24-7 championship belt in one night. Um, you knew he wasn't going to hold it for long. This 24-7 championship thing, um, um, unless they get really creative with it, is getting kind of old now. This is just a can of soup. Hmm. Then there was a Firefly Funhouse segment. And it was, um, I'm around with Stranger Danger, Stranger Danger, Stranger Danger. And I thought, and then everyone's going Stranger Danger and, and, Abby the Witch noticed that her clock stopped on 316. Oh, but Steve Austin's our friend. But remember, he's a rattlesnake. And here, he takes out the sledgehammer, and you're like, oh, is he going to get rambling rap again? And then, like, bonk, bonks the clock. And it has those, that, that really cartoonish, squeaky hammer sounding bonks. And then all of a sudden, oh, it's 1119 now. And I'm like, wait a second. No, it's not. It's 1019. Your clock is wrong, sir. But again, they had all the puppets there. Um, I think Huskus mentioned Ric Flair. So I think that's one of the people he wants to, he wants to see. <laughs> that would be funny. He wants to see uh, the fiend put the mandible claw on a Ric Flair. That would be interesting. I'm sure Ric Flair would do that in like a heartbeat. Um, no one's doing that to Stone Cold Steve Austin. Stone Cold, that's not happening. Stone Cold Steve Austin is just going to give him the Stone Cold Stunner. Uh, then we had the 10 men tag match to end the show. And I was happy that they did end the show in the main event segment with a main event wrestling match. Granted, it was a holla, holla, holla player. 10 man tossed together tag team match, but. I can deal with that. Uh, it was the Viking Raiders and Seth Rollins, Braun Strowman, and Cedric Alexander taking on AJ Styles, the club, Bobby Roo Robert Roode, and Dolph Ziggler. Uh, Seth and Dolph start the match, and then eventually one of the Viking Ivar gets, gets tagged in, and he starts beating on Dolph. And then all of a sudden, it's chaos. All ten men go in the ring, commercial break. You know what happens when all 10 men, eventually they kind of sort things out. 
And he goes back to a wrestling match when he come back. Um, AJ Styles and Cedric resume kind of their match. Let's turn to your typical 10-man spot fest. Uh, Carl Anderson. Carl Anderson was doing pretty good. He got to beat up Seth a little bit, too, which is pretty good to see. Um, Ivar just, like, kills everyone. Because everyone but AJ and Seth were outside the ring. Ivar just launches himself. And I'm sure someone's eyes, when they see a big, hulking, 300-pound man, they go like, Oh! As poor Carl Anderson's life flashed before his eyes once again. But this time, Carl Anderson did not eat the pin. AJ Styles ate the pin. Intriguing. I know there's been talk about how AJ wants to actually retire from wrestling after this contract's up. And I wonder if this is going to be his send send off if he loses the U.S. belt to Cedric Alexander. I have no idea when AJ... I think AJ still has, I think, two or three more years on his current WWE contract. And he's like, after this, I'm done wrestling. But that would make sense, because that puts him well into the 40-ish age range. And I know he has a young daughter. And I want to say he has three other sons. I don't know. They're, they're all tattooed. They're all, they're all tattooed on his ribs. That's the only reason I know. I think the daughter has like a pink bow next to her name. Again, AJ Styles. It's all on his ribs. Just take a look at his tattoos. So he just might say, "Hey, I'm I'm good," and he might. Like once, make like a once a year showing. Prior to some of his old promotions, like he might show up for like the New Japan Battle Royal. He might show up at like the Cars Battle Royal, Ring of Honor Battle Royal. Really, just be that kind of guest spot at Battle Royals. Show up, wrestle five times a year. I'm sure WWE would welcome him back for one of their Battle Royals. But, um, so Cedric Alexander did pin AJ Styles. Viking Raiders, Seth, Braun, Cedric were one. It was a good match. It was entertaining enough. It's a cheeseburger match. And that was wrong. Actually, for the most part, a fairly entertaining, quick-flowing Raw with the exception of the women's matches. And I'm still of the opinion, and you can feel free to send me your opinion, <sighs> the WWE doesn't know what to do with their women in matches, because they're either too short, too long, or the women, Lacey Evans, needs to go back to NXT. Because for some reason, Impact, and I might be alone in this, but Impact's women division seem better and get more in-depth stories and just makes their characters seem better and makes you want to watch them more. Um, AEW's women just want to fight each other for, and like not in the ring either. They want to fight each other backstage. Which is not good. But um, again, you can always feel free to leave your opinion in the comment section or you can send an email at, at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. I'll try to check my emails and try and get, I think, a couple more shout outs maybe Friday. After I cut a rest, I just had it. I just could well, I just could take it anymore. I just needed to tranquilo. So everyone have a good night and I'll see everyone. Well, tomorrow or Wednesday morning-ish. Bye.